Hello, my name is Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for July 26 to August 1st, 2015. And on July 26, we have the sun. You can see it denoted right here by this black circle with a dot in it. It's in Leo and it's in the 31st hexagram. And on the outside of the wheel, we see the chop mark for the 31st hexagram numbered from bottom to top. The 31 goes yin, yin, yang, 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 yin. And then the 31st hexagram is mapped to an opening in an energy channel called a gate. And right here is the 31st gate of leading influence, the law of friction, whether active or passive, that engenders transference and thus influence located in the throat center in a collective logic energy path in the understanding circuit called the channel of the alpha, a design of a, of a leadership uh, for good or bad that connects to its harmonic, the seventh gate of the role of the self, the army, the point of convergence by design, the need for leadership to guide and order society. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate in describing the person that I use it as my primary tool when I provide readings. And we've got the following activated gates on July 26. We've got the sun in the 31st gate. The earth is in the 41st gate. Uh, the north node is in the 46th gate with the south node in the 25th gate. Uh, Mercury is also in the 31st gate with the sun. Uh, Venus is retrograde in the 59th gate. Uh, we've got Mars in the 62nd gate. Uh, and uh, Jupiter is in the 29th gate with uh, Saturn retrograde in the 14th gate. And then Uranus is at a standstill or stationed as it turns retrograde on uh, the 26th in the 51st gate. And then Neptune is retrograde in the 37th gate. And Pluto is retrograde in the 38th gate. Um, so uh, obviously not every gate activation forms a channel. But uh, this information can be very helpful if you know your own human design chart. Because some of these transits will form channels with potentials in your personal body graph. And the neutrino forecast is just a weather report. No matter what the weather, your individual strategy and authority is the correct choice to have an authentic experience regardless of the program. As Ra Uruhu said, whatever the weather is going to be, you have your neutrino umbrella. As long as you're experimenting with your strategy and authority, the weather is for your pleasure. And as we begin the week, we've got two channel definitions due to the transit field. With Jupiter in the 29 and the north node of the moon in the 46, we've got the channel of discovery, which is a design of succeeding where others fail and failing where others succeed, which will be with us until August 12th, uh, bringing us the energy that if we make a commitment to something, we have to abandon ourselves uh, to it during the next month. Uh, it is through our experiences that we realize that there's no such thing as failure or success only continual discovery. This is about being in the now, in the experience of being alive. The Jafine G Center uh, could influence folks without to obsess about uh, where they're headed or, and uh, where they will find love. Uh, and this could also affect non-generator types in feeling busy. Uh, with the defined sacral and having the endurance to work. Obviously, don't get used to it. This is a conditioning uh, force of this transit. Um, and so they may think they also they may think that they know when enough is enough, which could lead to a premature or abrupt end to something that really needs more time. Uh, with the south node in the uh, 25th uh, gate and Uranus in the 51st, we have the channel of initiation, the design of needing to be first until November 29th. This is a significant transit uh, uh, lasting until almost the end of November, uh, where we might experience some sort of leap into the unknown. It's an individual channel that empowers through courage to take a chance on something unknown and deal with the consequences afterwards. Obviously, following your strategy and authority will help you determine if this initiation is correct for you or if faced with multiple possibilities to experience a quantum shift, which ones, if any, are correct for you. In the mundane world, 
Um, we're likely to see people become more competitive, uh, pushing the boundaries, getting outside of their comfort zones, which will be shocking to them and others uh, as they feel the wonder of their own unique spirit. Uh, if you experience people acting unpredictable during this time uh, period, recognize that this is a conditioning force that will eventually move on. Uh, but this could seem that folks are less in balance while experiencing this foreign energetic. With the defined ego center, uh, we, we are likely to have people who, who uh, do not have a defined heart center. They may feel as though they have something to prove or make promises or commitments that are not correct for them. And as we talked about earlier, the defined G center could influence folks without uh, a defined G center to obsess about the, where's, where's, what's their direction, uh, where it, will they experience love. Um, this is also individual circuitry, uh, which brings, uh, the definition brings melancholy that's best used in creative activities. And this transit really is going to be around for a very long time because uh, Uranus is at a standstill in the 51st gate, uh, and it's in the sixth line, and then it turns retrograde actually on July 26th at the beginning of this report period, uh, and, and uh, you know, starts backing through the lines. So basically, we're going to have this channel of shock initiation defined for the entire time that the nodes are in the 2546 axis. Uh, we're also we're going to be looking at the sun's raving line values uh, daily because 70 percent of the neutrinos we receive come from the sun. And as Ross said, in uh, living in with the program, the lines of the day, when he talked about these daily shifts of line values, he said we can always take advantage of the themes of the day. Obviously, if your strategy and authority does not lead you in that direction, you can also notice how the program is affecting others in your environment. So let's get started. On July 26th, that we start with the sun exalted in the first line of the uh, 31. It's described as manifestation. Influence cannot exist in a vacuum. Exalted, the sun uh, does not, cannot hold back its light and thus influence on every life. Uh, this is a natural expression of leadership. Uh, and uh, we're in the lower trigram, first, second, third lines. Uh, so, you know, this is much more of an inward perspective with the first line themes of some kind of a, a fear or an anxiety that needs to be investigated, researched, looked into, things of that nature. Uh, but then later on the 26th, the sun then moves into the second line of the 31. Uh, this shift happens at 1.19 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and the sun in the 31.2 uh, it, it starts out detrimented uh, by Mercury also being in the 31, uh, but uh, until a little later in the day when Mercury then moves it to the 33. Um, so this is described as arrogance, independent action without guidance, exalted the dedication to higher principles that cannot wait for consensus, leadership that cannot wait for consensus, uh, detrimented a reasoned arrogance that uh, out of a nervous tension jumps the gun and often misfires. The drive for expression that cannot wait uh, and may uh, cost leadership. Uh, the second line day, uh, it, you know, in this, it, everyone's waiting for something. They're waiting to be called, uh, particularly waiting to be called for their natural talents. People are stuck in their own trip. It's not really a great day to have a big social event because folks really don't want to leave their house or, or uh, go into a, a big public place. Uh, you know, with that influence of the hermit, uh, you know, the hermit energy is, is more of just staying put, uh, in, in, uh, where we have, feel comfortable. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, also on the 26th, uh, Mercury moves, um, out of the 31, leaving the sun behind and it moves into the 33. Um, so, uh, in uh, mythology, Mercury uh, was the messenger of the gods. So this is about communication or expansion of human consciousness through communication, not just as words, but also as music. What do you need to communicate in life? Well, we communicate the message of our design Mercury through the medium of our personality Mercury. 
according to Ra. So what might uh, be communicated with Mercury in the 33? Um, I'd expect to hear people say, I remember or I don't remember because those are the voices of the 33rd gate. This is the gate of privacy, retreat, active withdrawal and the transformation of a weak position into strength. And Mercury in the first line of the 33 is described as avoidance, uh, exalted, uh, the wisdom in a weak position to recognize that survival demands complete withdrawal, retreating when one realizes that they are in a weak position, detrimented where courage is just plain foolishness, unable to retreat when overwhelmed by stimulation. On the 27th, uh, the sun then moves up into the third line, leaving the, uh, the hermit line moving into the martyr line of the uh, 31st hexagram at 12.53 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun's exalted in the 31.3 as selectivity, exalted the ability to carefully access and choose the proper influence and to tailor one's behavior accordingly. The capacity to lead enhanced through association uh, with proper influences. Uh, third line days, uh, this is the line of the martyr, so we're talking about trial and error process, bonds made and broken, a system of discovery by figuring out what doesn't work. Uh, it's uh, uh, Things bump into us on the, uh, with that third line energy, so being careful on the roads, be careful things in your environment, whether it's someone's swinging elbows or a swinging door, things of that nature. Uh, we might have bonds made and broken under that third line energy. Um, and uh, it's a good material day. It's a good day to do business and work on the material plane, but you have to be careful because things can go wrong. Uh, but ultimately, those things may lead to discovery. On the 28th, the sun then moves up into the fourth line. So we're into the opportunist line of the 31 uh, at uh, 12.26 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and uh, so just 26 minutes after midnight on the 28th. Uh, and the sun in the uh, fourth line of the 31 is described as intent, the success of influence based on how it's perceived, uh, um, exalted, public acknowledgement uh, of a nurturing, productive influence, uh, external positive recognition uh, of one's capacity to lead, detrimented uh, perceived ego aggrandizement and attempted manipulation, external negative projection of one's capacity to lead. And the fourth line day, uh, we, we've moved out of the lower trigram for a second, third line into the upper trigram, fourth, fifth, sixth line. Um, and so this is a shift in, uh, in, uh, in perspective with the lower trigram being much more of an inward perspective. And when we get into the upward tri upper trigram with the fourth line, uh, we're, we're more looking outward with the themes of friendship, companionship, networking. Fourth line days are great for social interaction. People are more open to networking and being friendly and social. And then later on the 28th, uh, the sun then moves into the fifth line, into the, the heretic line of the 31. Um, and uh, this happens at 11.59 p.m., so just one minute before midnight on the 28th, uh, again, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the sun in the 31.5 is described as self-righteousness, uh, lack of external influence guaranteed by attitude. Uh, exalted a natural a specialization that only develops in isolation. However, when the when the development is complete, the extremely difficult and generally impossible task of externalizing the influence, a specialization that demands one lead oneself. Detriment a deep focus on personal experience that is self-fulfilling and has no external ambitions a lack of ambition where one uh, is content to lead oneself. Fifth line days, uh, the, the line of the heretic, uh, really what's important to know is it's about projection. And the projection always goes positive, then negative, 
positive, they could do it, they'd be great at it, they're the perfect person for whatever the thing is. And then if the person doesn't do it, can't do it, doesn't want to do it, for whatever reason, they don't meet the expectation. At that point, that's when uh, the projection turns negative, uh, the person gets punished, uh, the heretic is tied to the stake, if you will. Um, so, uh, the, uh, the, you know, elements of the fifth line day are, it's a day of suspicion, but also universalization where something can leak out and spread like a virus. Uh, like whether it's a YouTube video or a Facebook post that uh, gets millions of viewings. Uh, but there's also a great deal of suspicion and paranoia on the fifth line day, which can impact the nature of relationships. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, as I've said in the past, if they're out to get you, then you really then it's not really paranoia. And of course, uh, seduction is also a theme of the fifth line day. On the 29th, the sun then moves up into the sixth line, role model line of the 31 at 11.31 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun is exalted in the 31.6 as application, exalted actions which match the words and thus guarantee success. A leadership whose expression and action uh, must be one and the same. And the sixth line day, I like to think about, we're on the roof of the hexagram. If you think about standing on the roof of a building, we don't tend to look at the building we're standing on as much as what else is in the neighborhood, what's down the road, what's, you know, what's uh, around us. Uh, and uh, Ra talked about on six line days not to get stuck with your head in the clouds because you'll end up with something banging into your shins or your kneecaps. It's a day where there's a lack of focus on what's going on around you because folks are looking beyond their immediate environment. And like third line days, there are certain dangers of not seeing a car coming, perhaps not seeing a bill coming. And then also on the 29th, Mercury moves from the uh, 33rd gate and hexagram to the 7, which then uh, connects and completes this channel, uh, which then defines the, the throat center. Um, and uh, so uh, let, uh, we've talked about Mercury just a moment ago about being that this is about communications. So what might be communicated when Mercury is in the 7? Uh, I'd expect to hear people talk about authority and leadership because this is the gate of the role of the self, the army, uh, the point uh, of convergence by design, the need for leadership to guide and order the society. Mercury is detrimented in the first line of the seven as authoritarian, uh, the iron hand, both enlightened and despotic. Detrimented to the distorted intellect that believes only it knows best, the capacity of the self to insist that its authority is best. And with the sun in the 31 and Mercury in the 7, we have the channel of the alpha, which is the design of leadership for good or bad until the 30th. This might be a time where folks are recognized as true leaders, but the more reluctant they are to assume this responsibility, the better leaders they become. Being a logical collective channel, this confers the ability to understand patterns and trends which can be projected into the future. They also can explain uh, this informal information logically in a way that others can understand. The most important aspect uh, is uh, that these leaders are attuned to the rhythms of the people they are to lead. And on the 30th, then we have the sun moving from the 31 to the 33. The definition goes away. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, the earth moves from the 41 to the 19. So um, let's uh, start with the earth is in the 19th gate of wanting uh, approach. Uh, that all things are interrelated is apparent and manifested through the action of approach. This shift happens at 11.04 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And with the sun in the 33rd gate 
of privacy retreat, active withdrawal, and its transformation of a weak position into strength. And the sun is exalted in the first line of the 33, uh, which is described as avoidance, exalted, the wisdom in a weak position to recognize that survival demands complete withdrawal, re re retreating when one realizes they're in a weak position. And as we talked about earlier, the sun, when it's in the first, second, third lines, lower trigram, really is focused on an inward process. Uh, yeah, and as we said earlier, uh, you know, the theme of the first line day is a fear or an anxiety that needs to be investigated. So it's a day to study, not to act. It's a day to look into things, not to jump. It's a good day to deal with things you don't understand, can't make sense of, or don't know. And then also on the 30th, retrograde Venus moves from the 59 and joins Jupiter in the 29. Uh, in human design, Venus is very powerful and deeply misunderstood, according to Ra. It brings morality or values, natural law in which we deal with the other, and the consequences of the world around us. What disturbs you on a moral level? Your design and personality, Venus, is tell of the moral dilemma that you're going to work with in your life. And then if you do not act with moral clarity, Venus can be unkind in its retribution. In the 29th gate, uh, this is the gate of saying yes, the abysmal, uh, the deep within the deep, uh, persistence despite difficulty has inevitable rewards. And being retrograde, meaning that it's moving backwards from our perspective here on the earth, Venus backs into the sixth line of the 29, uh, uh, which is... Um, uh, where it is also detrimented due to Jupiter also being in the 29. This is confusion, the state that exists when momentum outstrips awareness. Detriment, a tendency in confusion to uh, withdraw rather than accept the condition and continue to persevere. Uh, the power in confusion to, uh, to caution rather than saying yes. Uh, and then on the 31st, the sun then moves into the second line, so leaving the investigative line, moving into the hermit line of the 33, which is described as surrender, exalted. The recognition that surrender to superior forces can be an opportunity to expand one's strength and eventually triumph, embracing powerful forces in order to lay the foundation for future success. Detrimented, unlike the reasoned and calculated surrender of the exaltation, uh, the deeper and personal surrender, the feeling that one's position was a delusion and the impressionability uh, that makes might right, uh, a public embrace of powerful forces and a private resentment of their power. And again, second line day line, this is the hermit line, you know, it, it's a day of people waiting to be called for their natural talents. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, just uh, wanting to remain in their hermitages. Uh, on August 1st, uh, the sun then moves up into the third line, the martyr line of the 33 at 10.08 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the 33.3 is spirit, the attitude that turns retreat into, into victory, exalted, the responsibility and principle to retreat based on preservation, uh, but will be, uh, de but with determination to persevere. Um, privacy as a path to success. Detriment, a lack of responsibility in retreat, a, the bridge burner, uh, the dr a drive for privacy that will cut off its relationships, often abruptly. Uh, third line days, again, we talked about the, the, the uh, martyr being about trial and error, bonds made and broken, and a system of discovery uh, by figuring out what doesn't work. And then uh, also on the first, Mercury moves out of the seventh gate and up into the fourth gate up here in the Ajna Center. And, uh, uh, you know, we talked about Mercury. Again, this is about communication. What might be communicated with Mercury in the four? I, I'd expect to hear people talk about logic and patterns, 
but also about doubts and suspicions. This is the gate of formalization, youthful folly, the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance, uh, freedom from retribution. And uh, Mercury in the first line of the four is pleasure. Uh, ultimate pleasure cannot be achieved without perfect timing. Uh, exalted, uh, the instinct to know the right moment and circumstance where pleasure is rewarded and not punished. Uh, the potential to recognize that there is a natural timing uh, to the understanding process. Uh, detrimented uh, timing is not a product of discipline. Exaggerated self-discipline leads to abuse uh, of pleasure. The potential to recognize, but the urge to force the timing. So no matter what the energies are that can, are conditioning you during the week, just remember this experience is about being a passenger riding in a vehicle that's being driven by the magnetic monopole. So enjoy your, the scenery. Let the vehicle take you where you need to go through using your strategy and authority. Every day is a blessing no matter what dramas beckon to distract us. We're all here giving the performance of a lifetime on this world stage. Just take some time to observe the play uh, as, uh, or observe your movie as well as acting your part by remembering that you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience. I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly neutrino forecast will be on August 2nd, 2015. should be available on the 1st uh, when we will continue to look at the influence of the heavenly bodies as they transit the sky in the hexagrams of the I Ching. You can check us out on Facebook, Blogger, or YouTube, as there are New World Birth presences in all those places. I encourage you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you have any questions or wish to schedule a reading. If you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. We're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available. And as always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries and their application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste in Lakesh. And as Ra would say, love yourself. Anyway, look forward to connecting with you next week uh, or uh, if you uh, contact me for a reading or, you know, send me an email if you have a question. All my best to everybody.